We are here in Alicante, one of the most visited spots in all of Spain, especially on the Costa Blanca. Quite frankly, it's a place we've avoided for a long time because we think it could be a huge tourist trap. But follow us along if you're curious to find out whether Alicante is worth coming to if you want to have a local experience here in Spain. We are hiking up to the Castillo de Santa Barbara. It's quite the hike already, but we have quite a long ways to go and I hope it's a great view at the top. So we decided to hike up the backside of the castle and hopefully leave those breathtaking coastal views for when we get to the top. But right now, while we're not even halfway up, we can already see some great views of the city, as well as what looks like another castle over there and a bunch of mountains in the background here surrounding Alicante. So we just made it up to the first part of the castle. We got some gorgeous sea views right behind me here, but we have a lot more to explore of the castle, so let's see what else we can see. If you've been following us for a while now, you know one of our favorite things about European castles is simply being able to climb up and explore them on your own. It's so cool just being able to walk around this history. and. With remarkable views like this over the Playa de Postiguet in the Mediterranean Sea, how much better can it get? So far, this castle has been awesome and we're excited to continue exploring because there's still part of it way up there and I can't wait to see the views from up above. So the Castillo de Santa Barbara was first built in the 9th century, way back when the Moors controlled most of Spain. And it wasn't until 1248 when the Christians had reconquered this and changed it into the castle we know today. But just looking at the views and how it's built right up on the mountain here, overlooking the beach and the entire city of Alicante, you can see why it was the perfect place to build a castle in order to defend the entire city. And I truly cannot even imagine what it would be like to conquer this castle. And you can see why it was part of the Moorish kingdom for so long because this had to have been incredibly easy to defend and incredibly hard to attack. So we've made it to the top of the castle and while it isn't the most exciting up here, you definitely get a bird's eye view of all of Alicante. You can see behind me is the city and then over on the other side is the sea and it's absolutely gorgeous up here. So right down there is where we were when we entered the castle after that steep hike up. And we thought we had come up quite a ways at that point, but looking up at those walls, now we're finally at the top. And once you even enter the castle, there's still quite a bit more climbing to do. So make sure you bring water and plan ahead. So we're back down from the castle and we decided to walk up as you saw earlier, but we decided to take the elevator down. Now, little trick is that you have to pay to go up however to come down it is free and we saw the line going up on the way down and it was pretty long so if you're gonna take the elevator up i believe it's only two euros but you might have quite a wait if you don't get here early and especially if you're here in peak season in the summer like we are Now obviously no video looking at whether Alicante is worth visiting or not and what to do in Alicante would be complete without food. But we ate so much incredible food in Alicante that we're gonna put that all in a second video for you. So make sure to subscribe so you can get notified of that video right away. Now back to Alicante, find out some more things to do and whether you should visit or not. So today we're here at Playa de Postiguet. It's the most popular beach in Alicante because it's right in the center. In fact, you have the Castillo de Santa Barbara right up there behind me. 
and it's just a ton of sand, probably I'd say easily a kilometer, could be a little bit wrong about that, but it's a beautiful area, beautiful water and not too many waves. So it's a nice peaceful place to swim as well as refresh yourself and get out of this Alicante sun. But the beach does get pretty busy. So just keep that in mind, especially if you come during busy months. Overall, it's a beautiful beach and it doesn't feel overly touristy. Plus, I mean, how can you beat these castle views that just overlook the beach right here? Now, of course, we are up at the castle looking down on the beach and it's just as great down here in the sun by the water looking up at this castle. It's just absolutely marvelous and a little bit of history while you relax in the sun. in the water i'm just going to reiterate it again this probably has to be one of the most beautiful beaches i've ever been to not necessarily because of the sand in the water but just because of the castle overlooking the beach right there it's absolutely incredible now it's time to check out the mercado central in alicante their main market is packed with about 300 different stalls selling everything from cured meats to incredible seafood and of course fruits and vegetables. Whether you're buying something or not, it's definitely worth it to go in, look around and especially explore the seafood section because of the wide variety of fresh fish and seafood that they have being located right next to the Mediterranean. So right now I am at the top of Barrio Santa Cruz, the oldest neighborhood here in Alicante. And it is absolutely gorgeous. The walk up through the neighborhood, these old narrow streets with just historic buildings. It actually gave me vibes of the Albathine in Granada. It was just beautiful and you can tell how just rich in history it is. And it's remarkable that people still live there. It's just a really cool area. So checking out Barrio Santa Cruz and coming all the way up to the Ermita de Santa Cruz is something you have to do when you come visit Alicante. Plus these views are absolutely remarkable. Plus, aside just from the sea, you get all these views off to the city behind me and you get those beautiful mountains of Alicante all around the background just surrounding this city. It's a remarkable place. And while you're not quite as high up as the Castillo de Santa Barbara, it's an amazing view and you actually get a little bit better view of the city and right over the top of some of the buildings here in Alicante. For something free, historical, and local to do in Alicante, you must stop in the Museo de Fogueres. This is the local Alicante festival that basically translates to the bonfires of San Juan. It takes place every year from June 20th to June 24th. The museum is filled with these handmade figures and statues that different groups have made throughout the years to celebrate Fogueres. Each one is a unique piece of art that you can tell the people of Alicante really put a lot of work into and they show their pride in the city and their local festival. Even if you're not visiting during Fogueres, it's a place you need to stop when you visit Alicante. Behind me right up here is the rock face on the Castillo de Santa Barbara. It is called La Cara del Moro, which is the face of the moor. And it's really just a rock formation that kind of looks like the side of the face. And I suppose they try to pay a little bit of tribute to the Moors who built the castle up there in the first place. And I suppose there are reason that Alicante is actually what it is today because of all the hard work that they did. I hope you can hear me over these church bells too. Next up for things to do in Alicante is the Mushroom Street. Yes, you heard that right, a Mushroom Street or Calle de las Setas. This is actually a regular road in Alicante that's turned into a pedestrian street and is now a yellow brick road 
where there are a bunch of different mushroom sculptures as well as toadstool houses that have turned into a bit of a playground for kids. The city of Alicante decided to install this public art to increase foot traffic as well as visitors to this area to help support the businesses. Now, even if you don't go to the businesses to buy anything, it's a bit of cool public art and something unique to Alicante that you should check out when you're here. Aside from going up to the Castillo de Santa Barbara, another thing you have to do, it's an absolute must, and I would say perhaps even a little bit more than the castle, is to come to the Parque de la Ereta. And that is because you just get a walk around, you get just about as incredible views of the city, and you need to kind of hike up that way instead of coming up the road like we did when we went to the castle before. That was a big mistake. You need to come up through this park, so you can kind of do two for one, and just climbing around these old castle walls is Again, something we absolutely love, and this has to be one of the best when you include the views of both the sea off one side to the city and mountains off to the other. It's just simply magnificent and one of the best experiences I've had hiking around a castle here in Spain. We decided to take a road trip for the day. We rented a car in Alicante and we are heading about an hour north-ish to Guadalest. It's supposed to be one of the most beautiful towns in Spain. So we're currently hiking up the Castel de Guadalest and we are about halfway up. You start down in a museum right down there and then you kind of go through that old house and you start walking up some stairs. It's not too steep but we still have a little bit to go to get to the final viewpoint. However, this view is absolutely fantastic. You can see that deep blue turquoise water behind me here. The city, the narrow streets built up on the hilltop as well as the other part of the castle and bell tower here plus down into the valley and all the way out to the Mediterranean. I'm really excited to get to the top. One pro tip while visiting Guadalest is to make sure to get here early, especially if you come during the summer because right down there is the public parking. It only costs two euros and that's where we parked our car, but I can tell from just about 40 minutes ago, it's already way more full than it was. So I can imagine that fills up and then you have to park along the road further out. So make sure to get here early. So without a doubt, the cherry on top of the Castel de Guadalest is coming all the way up to the top. It's not a super hard hike and there are plenty of viewpoints to stop along the way, but you get this remarkable sweeping view of the Mediterranean over here, the mountains all the way through the old ruins of the castle and to the reservoir below. So you definitely have to come all the way to the top. Once done at the castle, we decided to walk down through the small town of Guadalest to get some views along the old walls of the turquoise lake below. While they are great, there are a ton more people than there were at the castle and the views simply aren't as good. So we recommend paying the four euros to get into the castle and go up to the top. Once we were done in Guadalest, we hopped back in the car and decided to make an impromptu stop at Fonce de Algar. Supposedly a beautiful waterfall spot that you can relax and swim in and there aren't many better ways to beat the heat than going in a waterfall. Uh, so we are back in the car and we stopped at Fonce de Aguilar. And because we had the car, we decided why not stop here at a waterfall. Maybe we could swim, relax in the water and escape the heat a bit. But as we approached, we kind of had a feeling decided to park anyways and I suppose this is just something that 
we tried but we do not recommend you do yeah i guess once we got there there was just so many people it was super crowded you had to pay to get in to see this waterfall and swim around when you could see it from where we were standing and it just didn't really seem worth it to us. This was definitely, I would just say, a tourist trap. Yeah, that's what I was like, gonna say. We paid five euros to park, which was fine. The free parking was all full and it was a little bit further to walk. But when we started walking through, there were just restaurant after restaurant with like pictures of paella, mm -hmm. which usually means it's gonna be a frozen paella. So we actually just stopped and turned around. Yeah, I guess maybe, you know, this is the first week of July. So who knows, maybe into June or later into September, it would be a lot nicer, but honestly, I just would avoid it at all costs at this time of year. Our next stop since we had the rental car was to head to the beachside city of Altea. We wanted a quaint beachside city that wasn't too touristy, where we could relax on the beach and just enjoy some of the Costa Blanca. It was nice at the beach, however, it was super rocky and definitely not as touristy or nearly as busy as any other beach we've been to, like even the one in Alicante, which we didn't think was too bad. But overall, it was a beautiful little city and definitely a place you might want to visit if you're in this area and looking for a town that's a little bit less touristy. So back to Alicante. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably wondering, is Alicante a tourist trap or is it an authentic Spanish location that you can visit to get a true sense of what Spain is? Well, we're happy to say that we'd rate it as a true authentic experience. And now while it is the Costa Blanca, so you're gonna get as some tourists in the city, there are true Spanish areas that still hold that sense of community, the food, and those local bars that we absolutely love. So if you really wanna visit Spain, but also get some of the sun and beach of the Costa Blanca, Alicante is the place to go. If you like videos like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you over at our other videos. Bye.